Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a full coverage foundation routine for pale skin. This is intended to be a look that is very full coverage, however very natural. So I give you a lot of like tips and tricks on how to make your full coverage makeup look very natural so you can wear it in the daytime if you need to or if you just don't like a heavy sort of cakey looking base. So I hope you enjoy it and let's get into the tutorial. So firstly, before you can even think about putting any sort of pigment on your skin, it's so important to prep the skin. I have quite a little process when I want to do a full coverage look because I don't want to look cakey and I don't want it to look heavy. So I have just like cleansed and moisturized my skin so it's feeling nice and plump and clean. And I go in first with a little bit of my Benefit Professional Primer which helps to just fill in any pores as the name suggests. Um, but also helps to just even out a bit of skin texture. I generally put it here. This is just sort of where my pores are most prominent, sort of around my nose area. Um, and I do often put like a little bit around my chin as well. As you can see, the main sort of skin concern I have is breakouts around my chin. So this helps to smooth my skin texture a little bit around here. Then I like to go in with a kind of more illuminating base. I use the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Pearl. And I just grab a little bit of this, like kind of like half a pump or so, just about that much. And I generally pop this kind of on the high points of my face. So a little bit like down my nose, um, on my forehead, and on the tops of my cheeks. But this just helps to give my skin a bit of luminosity that will show through the makeup. Then I like to lay down what I call like a priming water. Um, you can pretty much use any setting spray for the step. Like Smashbox does make an actual priming water. I've never used that before. But um, basically if you use any spray that has like a glycerin in it, it's going to help to make your makeup stay a lot longer and also hydrates the skin. So I love MAC Fix Plus, this is just my travel size one, um, and also the Mecca Cosmetica Makeup Perfecting Mist. This bottle's looking really, really old and well loved. I'm going to use the Mecca one today. I have a bunch of foundations that I love to use for a full coverage look, but my favourite one that I keep reaching for lately is the Lancome Tint Adol Ultra 24 Hour Makeup in the shade 090. This is very, very, very pale, so if you're pale like me, this shade will be awesome. It's sort of neutral, cool tone. You can definitely build it up to a full coverage if you want, but you can also kind of share it out to be medium if that's more what you're into. I'd recommend applying it with a damp beauty blender. Um, even if you want a full coverage, I know beauty blenders can share out your formula a little bit, but if you want your makeup to look a lot less cakey and more natural and kind of meshed with your skin, I would use a beauty blender and just apply a few layers. Um, you're going to get a much more sort of natural look than using a brush. So I usually do about two pumps of this foundation. It doesn't pump out very much, so it's not like I'm putting an excessive amount all over my skin. So just a few blobs around the face like that and then you take your beauty blender and dab it into the skin. Doing a sort of patting motion is going to press the product into your skin and make it look a lot more natural um, as opposed to kind of swiping. Um, you get a lot less streaks and it looks a lot more sort of airbrushed. If you want that kind of extremely natural but flawless look you have to spend the time blending. So I would spend about three or four minutes just patting this into my skin. Now that has given me a really solid medium coverage level. I'm going to add a little bit more product and build it up um, again to a second layer. So for this I'm just using a single pump just because I'm only adding a little bit more. Now it's really 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 essential on the second layer that you take your time and blend this in well or else it will look like it's just sitting on top of your skin. I really love this foundation as well because it doesn't set very fast so you have quite a bit of time to like work it in. Um, it doesn't cake up and set straight away so that's another reason why I love it. It's so easy to work with. So now that I've finished my foundation I'm going to go in and spot conceal using my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in the shade Chantilly. This is one of my favourite concealers. I also love the Radiant Creamy Concealer by NARS in the same shade. And the Tarte Shape Tape is also one of my favourites. And all of those would work really well for this method. I just want to use this one today. This is the most full coverage concealer that I own. So I'm using this little brush from Eco Tools. This is one of their new ones from their new collection. It's called the Airbrush Concealer Brush, which I really like. It's like a very, very fluffy kind of duo fibre brush. Um, and I just dip it straight into the product. Just grab a really small amount. And then any of the areas where I can still see quite a bit of pigmentation coming through, particularly around where I have a lot of like old like blemish scars, um, and I just kind of work this into the skin in a really soft sort of circular motion. 
And this concealer is so full coverage, you only need a really small amount. Um, and that's what I'd really recommend if you're wanting a natural looking full coverage look, use really highly pigmented products but in a minimal way. Um, and you'll just get such a natural look to the skin. You can also use your finger for this, which can be quite nice if you're struggling to get the products to kind of blend in with your skin. The warmth of your finger can help. But I find this brush great. So I do have like the odd sort of like quite prominent freckle that I actually like to leave on my skin showing through. I don't cover those up with concealer because it helps my skin to look like skin, if that makes sense. So all I'm covering is like uneven skin texture, redness, um, any breakouts, things like that. But I'm leaving these kind of like little freckles. I've got one or two sort of more prominent freckles that I like to leave there. I'm also going to take this product under the eye as well and just help to counteract some of the darkness I have under there. I also quite like to use the this brush, which is the micro blending tool from EcoTools as well. It's a good brush line. I only just got these brushes. This one kind of has that more sort of flat surface, so it's quite nice for um, blending out under the eye. You can also just use a beauty blender or your finger. I find my finger does work really well for kind of pressing product, this product in under the eye. The trick to keeping this looking natural is to use very little product. I know a lot of people love to just like do these massive triangles under their eyes to get a really full coverage and that can look good for certain kind of makeup but when you want a sort of natural full coverage look I would only use as much as you possibly need. And as you can see that has just really brightened under my eye and covered up those dark circles but it still looks really natural and if you ever feel like anything looks a bit heavy you can just take your damp beauty blender you can even moisten it again with a setting spray if it started to dry out during the process and just kind of bounce over any areas that you feel like are looking a little cakey it is important to set most concealers the only concealer i don't need to set is the tart shape tape it's the only one i find that dries down and doesn't tend to move around um, but it can look quite drying it's a little bit more of a heavier concealer in that sense my favorite setting powder to not look cakey is the models prefer um, mineral veil which I've talked about heaps on my channel I really love it you can just use your damp beauty blender for this step as well but if you want it to look quite lightweight I would use a brush because you can get a little bit less product sometimes the beauty blender picks up a bit too much product it's kind of more like baking the under eye but if you want a full coverage makeup look to look really natural I'd probably avoid baking and instead I'd just grab like a sort of tapered brush this is a double-ended one by hourglass like tap your brush into the product really whack off as much product as possible there's barely any on there and then you simply just lightly press that into any of the areas that you put concealer. So that's what it looks like after all of those steps. I'm going to pop on the rest of my makeup and come back and show you guys what it looks like. And this is what it looks like with the rest of my makeup on. Because I know a lot of you will probably ask. I'm going to whip over um, all the other details of what I'm wearing on my face. To contour I used my Heroin Eyeshadow by Illamasqua. Um, and then I went in with the Bare Minerals Invisible Bronze Powder in Fair to Light. I used the Too Faced Love Flush Blush in Baby Love. And I also went in with a bit of highlight and I used my Bare Minerals Invisible Glow Powder in Fair to Light. On my brows, I used all Benefit products. I started with the Precisely My Brow Pencil in shade 2. Then followed by the Cabrow gel cream brow color in shade 2 as well which is like a pomade which I used on the outer part of my brow the pencil I used on the inner part of my brow and then I used the Benefit Gimme Brow in shade 3 on all over on my eyes I used uh, Urban Decay Naked Basics palette as well as my roller lash mascara I've got some little half lashes on the outside I used a bit of the Chi Chi eye brightener on my waterline and my liquid liner is the Kat Von D tattoo liner and finally for lips I'm using the Hourglass Girl Lip Styler in Creator Followed by a little bit of the Too Faced Lip Injection Glossy in the color Angel Kisses. So I hope you found this video helpful. Do leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe if you are new for more pale skin makeup tutorials. If you want to see my last tutorial for pale skin, I'll link that up here. And you can also subscribe by clicking on my face down here. Until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful few days. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!